Okay, so now I'm going to draw one more reaction and this is the addition of bromine or chlorine on the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. So, if I have to just write the reaction, the reaction looks like this where the bromine gets added on the carbon-carbon double bond. But it, this reaction kind of is surprising, right? Because we cannot really quickly figure out which is the electrophile here. Because electrophiles are, are the compounds that are electron loving. So, they themselves are kind of positively charged. So, where is the positive charge in bromine and bromine compound, right? If I really think about it, the two bromines are sharing the electrons equally, right? That is what we assume. But in reality, as the bromine gets approached by the carbon-carbon double bond, okay, the electrons of the carbon-carbon double bond are going to polarize the bromine-bromine bond. What is going to happen is that the electron cloud between the two bromines is not going to be equally shared between the bromines, right? And what will happen is that the one of the bromines will get partially positive whereas the other bromine will have a larger share of the electron cloud and will be partially negative. So, this bromine bromine bond is really a bond between two bromines such that one of them is slightly more positive than the other. So, what, what happens next is that the double bond attacks on this bromine as a result of which the bond between the bromine bromine breaks. Okay. Now, what you would expect is that the bromine gets added on one of the carbons and you form a carbocation. That is logical to think, but think about it. There is a carbocation present which is really positively charged. Right next to it is this bromine atom which is very bulky and full of electrons. So, what really happens is that the bromine will push its electrons towards the carbocation and will form something called as a bromonium ion. This is such a fast process that in fact you do not even see the formation here. More often you cannot isolate this carbocation. In fact, more often you will see chemists drawing the formation of the bromonium ion directly and that is what we are going to adopt. We are going to show that the double bond reacts with the bromine such that the bromine bromine bond breaks, but then immediately this bromine comes back to form a bond with the other carbon to form this bromonium ion. Now, if you think about the geometry of this bromonium ion, what you will see is that either the bromine triangle has to come towards you or the bromine triangle has to go away from you. These are the two possibilities of the bromonium ion. Okay? In the next step what happens is that another bromide ion is going to come and attack on this carbon and kick open the bond to form our final product. Now, let us look at the models for this particular reaction. Okay. Herein I have shown the bromonium ion. So, what we have here is that as you can see the bromonium ion right now is such that it is coming towards you right such that this bromine is kind of holding the space here. Remember the bromine is a really bulky atom. So, there is a lot of electron density around this particular center. So, when the bromide ion the other bromide has to attack it cannot really come from this side because there is a lot of steric hindrance from this side right. The triangle is forming towards you. So, this particular bromide cannot really attack from here as a result of which what happens is when the other bromide has to attack, it has to perform something called as a backside attack. So, it is going to attack from the backside of this triangle. Suppose that it attacks here on this particular carbon. This carbon cannot keep making 5 bonds for example, like this. It has to break one of its bonds and what you see is that the two bromines are such that if one of them is going away from you, the other one is kind of coming towards you. So, what you see here is that this is an anti-addition. Anti meaning going into opposite directions. 
the two bromines are added on the carbon carbon double bond such that this forms an anti addition product okay how do we represent it on paper so here are two bromonium ions one of them have a bromine coming towards me and the other one has a bromine going away from me now what happens is as this br minus the bromide attacks you're going to kick open this bond what do you form you form a product that looks like this now this bromine attacked from the back so the bond between carbon and that bromine will be at the back so it is going away from you on the other hand when a bromide will attack on this carbon it has to attack from the front because the bromonium ion is formed at the back the bromide has to attack from the front and what you form is this particular bromine will be here the other will be going back what we have really given rise to is an anti addition of the bromine across carbon carbon double bond so now we will look at the animation of this reaction let us think about these products when we brominate a cyclohexene molecule we really create a pair of enantiomers and you can see that because i have illustrated the whole chair conformations of these products on the screen here we give rise to 1s2s 12 dibromocyclohexene and 1r2r 12 dibromocyclohexene if you think about it both of these are going to be created in equal proportion so in reality you're creating a racemic mixture as this reaction happens but the relationship between these two is they are enantiomers of each other now let us look at one more variant of this reaction in the first reaction we didn't really talk about the solvent so typically bromine is taken in presence of something called as a dichloromethane so ch2cl2 is our solvent or in the presence of ccl4 okay these are the solvents for this kind of addition but now if i try to do bromination in presence of water wherein i take br2 and h2o what really happens so we are going to look at this particular example okay the first step is the same as the alkene reacts with the bromine the first step is such that the double bond creates a polarization of the bromine bromine bond and breaks the bond between the bromine and bromine and you end up forming a bromonium ion okay so let me draw the two bromonium ions here one of the possibilities is that the bromonium ion gets formed away from you whereas the other possibility is that the bromonium ion gets formed towards you okay these are the two possibilities now think about it you have a bromide ion formed as well as the end of this reaction but there are so many molecules of water around you because you are in a solvent which is water large amount of water molecules are present so the the next attack really doesn't happen with the bromide ion but the, the molecule that is going to attack next is going to be a water molecule okay so what's going to happen next is that the water molecule here is going to attack again it is going to do the same kind of attack if the bromonium ion is formed towards you then water has to attack from the back if the bromonium ion is formed away from you then water has to attack from the front this is just to lower the steric hindrance of the attack but now if you really look at this compound the compound is not symmetrical one of the carbons is more substituted so now the next question we need to ask is which is the carbon that really gets attacked right so if we think about it let me just draw one of the bromonium ions again we are assuming that the bromine is kind of equidistant from the two carbons but that is really not the case remember that the 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 bonds are really just electrons that are held between the two atoms so it is not a static molecule but it is kind of moving in the solution so the the bromine atom which is in the center of the triangle 
uh, can really be such that it is closer to one of the carbons and kind of further away from the other or vice versa right. So, either this is a possibility or I can draw it closer to this other carbon and really further from the this carbon the first carbon ok. Now, if you think about it either of these two situations are possible the bromine is never at one static position it is going to be kind of swaying in between the two carbons holding on to the both of them. If you think about it bromine being further away from carbon number 1 is kind of ok because carbon number 1 has a methyl group on it. As this happens as the bromine gets further away from carbon number 1 there is a delta positive starting to develop on that carbon. Whereas, if bromine gets away from carbon number 2 carbon number 2 here develops a delta positive right. So, if you think about it between this situation and this situation the one in red is kind of favored because that particular intermediate has a carbocation that is more substituted or partially formed positive charge on a carbon that is more substituted and hence it will be favored as compared to this earlier one. And so, when the water molecule wants to attack water molecule will attack carbon number 1 instead of carbon number 2 ok. So, what we are going to do is we are going to attack our water molecule on carbon number 1. Now, when the bromonium ion is going away from you water will attack such that it attacks from the front and it will break this bond. So, what do we form here? We either form a molecule looking like this. Now, water attacked from the front. So, water will be in the front ok that is what you want to remember that water attacked from the front. So, the bond between carbon and oxygen will be towards you and as a result of which the methyl bond will go away. Now, the other carbon bromine bond really did not take part in the reaction. So, it remains unchanged ok. So, that will be one of the products. But remember this is not the final product yet because we have given rise to a charged species ok. So, what we are going to do is we are going to do one more step to make that oxygen happy oxygen does not really like being positively charged. So, what we are going to do next is that another water molecule will come in and grab a proton from here. And will form this particular product. Now, if you see clearly the OH and the bromine are added anti to each other ok. Again this is an anti addition reaction. Any addition reaction in which you have a cyclic 3 uh, membered ring formed as an intermediate the end product is going to be almost pretty much always an anti addition product. That is because the triangle gets formed either towards you or away from you and really creates a steric hindrance for the incoming nucleophile ok. What would be the other product? So, if this particular intermediate reacts what would be the product? Let me write it down. If this particular intermediate reacts we are going to just have a bond switch such that the carbon bromine bond will be now coming towards you carbon methyl bond will be coming towards you and the carbon OH bond will be going away from you. Again if you see that the OH and BR are going anti to each other ok. This is a regio specific reaction as well. So, you are going to see that the water always always pretty much attacks the more substituted carbocation or more car substituted carbon that could have formed in the reaction. So, this particular reaction is also called as halohydrin formation, halohydrin because we have added a halogen which is bromine and we have also added a hydrin which is the OH from water molecule. So, this is a halohydrin formation reaction. Thank you.